Hello, this is Sash Kazaminijah with ID8 Software. In this video, we will look at ways in which you can use ID8 BIMLINK to take an owner's program requirements, which is typically created in an Excel-based document, to easily create new masses so that you can start to create space adjacencies and even building form. In this example, we have already created a massing schedule in Revit, which will compare the program area to the actual mass floor area and will flag conditions that do not meet our requirements. Let's go ahead and see how Bimley can expedite this process. In this particular example, we have created the mass family and have placed one within our project. We'll go ahead and select the mass and we'll look at the different types that we have created. And in this particular project, we've created six different masses, each one representing a program function. We'll select the mass again and we'll look down at the phase created. And as you can see, we've created a programming phase. This is entirely optional. If you go to edit type, you can see that we've also applied a material to our masses. This will allow us to render it or even go to a shaded mode and actually see what the uh, mass looks like. We'll now go to the manage tab and then we'll click on the phases button. And as you can see, we've created the programming phase. We'll hit OK. We'll now go to the mass programming schedule which has a mass number, a room name, a target square foot, actual area, and percentage difference. Go back to the level one programming, and then we're gonna switch over to the Excel document. In this particular example, we exported out our programming schedule using BIMLINK, and then filled in the Excel file based on our owner's program requirements. Under the ID column, we're creating new masses by using the word new, and then for the family and type, we're using the department, which we manually filled out and concatenated that with the mass family. These are representative of all the family types that we already created in the mass family itself. For the width and depth of the masses, we're rounding up the square root of the target square foot, which will give us a square. If you want a rectangular shape, you can certainly manually uh, input your own width, uh, depth, and height if you want to. For the coordinate points, we started off at 0, 0, and then for the subsequent masses, we're adding up half of the prior mass with half of the new mass, and then giving about a five foot distance in between. This will essentially array masses along a linear path. As you can see, when we select the five over here, that represents the five foot distance in between. We simply select and fill down, which will automatically generate these uh, new values. We'll go ahead and go back to Revit. And now we're going to switch over and we'll have a look at the mass family itself. We will start off by clicking on the family types button. We'll first look at all the mass types that we've created which once again represents all the program spaces. Then we'll go to the mass material and we'll click on the ellipsis button. As you can see here, we've created several different mass materials. Once again, each one of these represents a program function. We decided to color the graphics and the appearance in case we either render it or whether or not we hit the shade button. We'll switch over to the tag family now. We will start off by clicking on the mass room name and then we'll click on the edit label button. The mass room name in this example was created as a shared parameter. This way we can schedule it and tag it. We'll click on the next label and as you can see this is a multi-line label. It consists of the mark, the type name, the target square footage which is also a shared parameter and the gross floor area which in this case will be the mass floor area. Now that we're back in Revit, we'll go ahead and select on the BIM link button and we'll have a look at the properties of our link definition. As you can see on the right hand side, we've added several parameters to create this definition. Some of these parameters, such as the coordinate points, are not available to us within a Revit schedule, but are available to us within BIM link. These coordinate points will allow us to place our masses at a certain location. You can click on the filters tab if you want to do any filtering and if you want to pre-sort your Excel file before exporting, you can certainly do so here as well. We'll go ahead and hit cancel. And if we did make changes, it's a good idea to right mouse click 
and save the link definition. This way you can use it for future use. We'll now click on the import button and we'll bring in our already created Excel file. Once the Excel file is imported using BIMLINK, we'll go ahead and take a moment to review the data for all the changes that have occurred, and then we'll review for any errors and warnings and a description of the action that's been taken. In this case, we've created new masses. We'll go ahead and hit the Import button, and then we'll hit the Close button to complete the process. We'll zoom extents here, and as you can see, we have several masses on our screen. We'll hit the Shaded button to see the colors, as you can see, they've all been arrayed both in the X direction and in the Y direction. We'll go ahead and tag all of our masses as well. And in this case, this is the tag that has the shared parameters that we've created. We'll hit the Apply button and we'll hit OK. Now that the tags have been placed, we'll zoom in a little bit closer and have a look at the details. As you can see, the tags are reporting the information from the mass. The actual area of 361 square foot represents the mass floor feature, which you have to enable in order to get the tag to report. To enable mass floors, we need to select all the masses from the entire model. We'll go ahead and use ID Explorer to speed up this task. We'll use the active view, and then we'll select all the masses. Then from there, we'll select on the mass floors button from under the modify mass, and then we'll pick the level in which we want to create the mass floors. We'll hit OK to complete this task. We'll go ahead and go back to the programming schedule, and as you can see, we only have a 3% difference between the target square footage and the actual area. If we stretch the mass out a little bit, you can see the actual area changes to 404 square feet. When we go back to the programming schedule, the percentage of area difference now updates. So, what are some of the benefits of creating masses with ID BIMLINK? Well, for starters, you can use the existing owner's programming data to quickly create mass data within Excel. You can use the power and accuracy of Excel and BIMLINK to create massing forms. You can also place hundreds of masses in a matter of seconds at any location and array using the exposed coordinate points within BIMLINK. ID8 Incorporated is an Autodesk authorized developer with 25 plus years in software development with a specific focus on building information modeling. For more information about ID8 BIMLINK and other ID8 products, please visit our website at www.id8software.com.